Well, good morning. Welcome to Match Fishing Magazine. And we're here today at the uh, Foundation Lake at the Mallory Park Fisheries Complex. I'm here with Roy Marlow. Um, and we're here to do a bit of netting. Right? What does this entail then, Roy? Why are we doing it? And well, like most fisheries, um, I'm afraid they're not managed very well. Yeah. Um, particularly these commercial fisheries. Uh, we net all of our lakes. This is the Foundation Lake on a three-year cycle. Um, the reason we do that is to take out fish of the size that the anglers don't want to catch, so yep. normally it's this um, size and smaller. And after three years, if the water's been looked after, uh, you'll find that there's a massive explosion and there'll be countless thousands of fish Small from that size downwards. Right. And although a lot of anglers will say, oh, you don't want to take <laughs> them out, the problem is if you leave them in, everything else starts to stunt. Um, but the interesting thing is on commercial fisheries is that not many of these fish get caught. I mean, we net all of our lakes and, and all the members come along and they stand there and they go, wow, and just didn't realize there was thousands and thousands and thousands of these small fish, but nobody catches them. Yep. And of course, the reason they don't catch them, most of the time, they're not eating anglers baits. So I'm not saying you wouldn't catch them if you fished, say with bloodworms, but Certainly things um, like the maggots and the casters, these fish don't eat them. So what they're eating is mainly carp crap because obviously there's so much high protein bait going in and it's passed through the carp. Uh, Easy meal they're eating them. that. Um, obviously the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, uh, which really is prolific in a lot of these waters. So the surplus of fish is astronomical. Mm. Um, and the answer in most cases when a fishery does not fish very well is not to put more fish in, it's to take fish out and sort out the water quality. So, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, if a lake's not fishing well, actually try and take some fish out rather than put more in. Absolutely, there's, there's always a reason why it's not fishing very well. Um, obviously a lot of the time, it can, uh, and I think the biggest single cause is the oxygen content. Right. We always used to talk about air pressure, which is important, and we talk about the wind and whatever. Uh, but there's so many fish in waters like this, if, if they don't fish reasonably well, something is wrong. Normally it's water quality, and normally it will be the oxygen content, so the dissolved oxygen. Uh, and of course the more fish you've got in there, and the more crap that's coming from all the food that's going in, the more dissolved oxygen you need. Yeah. There's only three ways you can put oxygen really into the water. The first one is the air pressure. So high pressure is pushing, actually oxygen pushing oxygen into. in. Low pressure is sucking it out. The wind is important because you can imagine if you've got an acre of water and it's flat, you've got an acre of water, you put some waves on it and it'll double up. And of course the, the oxygen can start to get into it. And the other one, of course, is, is by what we call the phytoplankton. And this is where photosynthesis comes in. So that's generating oxygen through the warmer weather. Just like, you know, the oxygen and the air we're breathing, the oxygen in the air, where does it come from? Of course, it's been generated out there in the oceans by the phytoplankton. Um, so they're the three ways, unless you're going to use artificial means like aerators, uh, oxygen is going to get into that water. And usually I find when I go around the country and somebody says to me, my water's not fishing well, nine times out of ten I can throw that oxygen meter in and say, well there's your problem. It's too low. You're too low. Now then you've got to remedy it. And that's always not so straightforward. Yeah. So, right, so today obviously we're looking at netting this lake. It's, it looks like it's going to be tricky because there's lots of islands and things. So what, what, how, have you, how are we going to go about it then, is it? Okay, well first of all you need a, a good netting crew. Yeah. And I've used the same people, it's mainstream. Um, uh, the company's called Mainstream and it's based out there in Spilsby in Lancashire. Mm -hmm. I've used them for 15, 20 years, all since the beginning. Very, very professional. Um, and every water is a little bit different. Now, today obviously we're netting for silverfish, mm -hmm. not every fish, and there is a big difference on your techniques, the type of nets you're going to do it, the way you're going to pull it, and of course the level of the water. I've dropped this lake about two feet today, um, which is going to be about right for silverfish. Now you've got to bear in mind, I'm not trying to get them all out, I want about 80% out, because what is left will grow very, very quickly. And, but how do you judge which is 80%? Very, very difficult on a lake like this with <laughs> islands in. A lot of hiding so holes, isn't there? A lot of it is going to be a bit hit and miss. 
There is thousands of pounds of carp in here. We might not get that many. One of the reasons is that they'll go under the net. We get that many in the net and they'll dig down in the silt and it'll go over the top. So you've got to use different techniques if you want to net the carp. But as I say, the aim today is not the get carp, it's the silverfish. And about three years is what I do on all of my lakes. Around the country, some lakes might be four years. But on average, I would say if you've got a good fertile water, you will have a surplus crop every three years. So you're saying that three years ago you pretty much took it back to scratch yep. and in three years there'll be a massive head of silver. That's right. Uh, nature, Amazing. Nature it? fills the gap. You know, you've got the water a hold what we call a certain biomass of fish. And so let's just say it was a thousand pound but it could equally be ten thousand pound but so if you took half of them out from a mm -hmm. thousand and that's going to give you 500 what i'm saying in three years time you should be back up to a thousand pound um that, that's what nature's going to do for you um but of course the thousand pound might not be made up of fish of the size and quantity and quality what the angler wants to catch yeah. A lot of these. Yeah, we have. Uh, it's quite good actually. We have a two corn rule. So if a fish is big enough to eat two pieces of corn on the hook, it stops. <laughs> if it's smaller than that, it goes. It goes on its holidays. <laughs> it goes on its holidays. Oh, it? brilliant! Right. Well, that, hopefully a bit of nice information for you there, and we're going to get on with it and see what we catch. Yeah. Okay. It's brilliant. A go. Thank you.